Thanks for bearing us with uh, while we deal with technical issues. Um, so the next talk here is about Flex Attention, uh, which is a new API we're providing that kind of tries to provide the uh, flexibility of PyTorch with the performance of Flash Attention. And so this work was done by Yambo, uh, Driss, Joy, and Horace. Uh, Yambo is over there, uh, in the, right there. Uh, I think the other people aren't here. So as you know, all of us probably know, uh, attention is uh, all you need. Uh, and I think this has only become more true in the seven years since this paper has been published. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, in practice, you also need uh, flash attention, uh, which is kind of this uh, fused efficient kernel uh, that kind of provides significant memory and performance uh, benefits. And unfortunately uh, for flash attention, uh, unfortunately for people who want to do attention, uh, people keep on coming out with new stuff. You have stuff like sliding window attention, you have like alibi, prefix, you know, causal, blah, 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 soft capping, page attention, and uh, you know, researchers just keep on coming out with new attention variants. Um, and so this poses a big problem for people who want to write, uh, you know, provide like libraries like PyTorch, uh, because you know, every time you add a new variant to attention, uh, the people who write attention operators kind of need to add new quarks. Uh, and so I kind of asked you know, some uh, ChatGPT, some projections of how the attention APIs might look like in 2027. And so it's projecting you know, we might have like 15, 20 quarks uh, by 2027, you know, just to add you know, all your new attention variants in, in one uh, API. And so even though you have all these quarks, uh, this still isn't enough. <laughs> like constantly, you know, we see on people on Twitter, you know, complaining like there's still no prefix LM for flash attention. Uh, you keep on have people complaining that, you know, flash attention repo doesn't support blah and blah, you know, my favorite attention variants. And so, you know, even though, you know, all these uh, like uh, attention operators have added a lot of quarks, uh, it's still not enough to support all the different attention variants. And so as a result, you kind of end up with this current state of the world uh, where when you're choosing between using attention implementations, you can either choose like flexibility, i.e. implement everything with like native PyTorch drops with like mammals, or you can choose a performant implementation, uh, which is used like a single monolithic flash attention operator, uh, but you don't have many uh, choices on how you kind of want to modify it. And so what we're providing is this API uh, flex attention, which kind of aims for three things. So the first one is that it's flexible, uh, which is that it allows implementing many attention variants uh, kind of in a generic manner in a few lines of idiomatic PyTorch code. Uh, number two is performant, uh, which is that we lower into like a fast writing kernel and we can also take advantage of sparsity in your attention mask. Uh, and finally, and this is kind of a subtle point, uh, it's reliable, which is that uh, if you write it in this API, it is guaranteed to be lowered into a fused flash attention kernel. Uh, there's no like, uh, you know, performance cliffs where, you know, we accidentally don't pattern match it or something like that. Uh, there's no way or sorry, there's not no way. It's very hard to mess this API up. And so the way we kind of think about this is that today the way the attention kernel landscape looks is kind of on the left, uh, where you have this uh, like hypercube of like different attention variants that are kind of supported. And so you know, although you know people have done a, a tremendous job kind of supporting many different attention variants that people want, uh, the overall cube kind of still ends up looking kind of sparse. Uh, and even worse, you know, if you will have your new own personal attention variant, uh, most of the times, like the attention kernels won't support it. Uh, on the other hand, with flex attention, we aim for something on the right, uh, where you have this entire hybrid cube, and we support every single point in this cube, uh, all efficiently and all with you know their very own uh, fused attention implementation. Um, so to kind of look at like what exactly flex attention is like, uh, many of you probably are familiar with the attention equation. Uh, which is kind of a softmax of QK transpose, uh, you know, multiplied with V. Um, and so flex attention just introduces a single function, uh, score mod. And so what score mod does is that it applies, it's like a, a function that applies after your mammal between Q and K transpose. And so this is actually kind of a, um, it's kind of like a points function, um, and it's kind of a very simple function uh, on one hand, but on the other hand, it's kind of a, been a lot more flexible than we had even uh, originally anticipated. So to kind of go through a brief tour of like what you can implement a score mod, so the standard full attention here, you know, if you just like you know, want to do full bidirectional attention, uh, you just you know return the score directly. You have like the score uh, value, you return it, you know, one to one. You don't do anything, and uh, you know this gives you your regular full attention uh, kernel. And so just to show here, we also support you know backwards pass. Uh, you know, obviously you need to support both uh, forwards and backwards. Another variant of attention that people often want to do is relative positional encodings. And so here it's kind of you want to like you know encode the relative position between two different uh, like positions in, in your attention operation, and the way this looks like in uh, flex attention I think is very pleasingly simple. You just simply add 
you know, Q index minus KV index, right? That's like the relative position between your two, your query token and your KV token. And uh, notably, you know, if you try running this, you know, it's uh, quite uh, efficient. Um, like, you know, uh, it, it's like a lot faster than using like the Py, the like PyTorch uh, default attention uh, APIs uh, with like a fully materialized mask. Uh, to kind of like do a, a simple variant uh, like Alibi, uh, where you kind of want to do a positional encoding and then also multiply it by like a head dependent uh, scalar. Uh, and so in this case, this kind of does show off like one interesting uh, facet of flex attention, which is that you can load from like uh, external uh, tensors uh, that weren't explicitly passed in uh, to your input. Uh, another variant of attention that people want recently is like a Gemma 2 and Grok 1 both use something called soft capping. And so this is a technique uh, that tries to prevent your logis from growing too large. Uh, you know, you kind of want to apply this like a tan H and division thing. And you know, once again, this is super simple to implement with flex attention. Uh, while you know, if you're using flash attention, this is like a whole new, you got to modify CUDA, cutlass, whatever. Uh, it's like a, a much more involved uh, process. Uh, and so finally, uh, maybe this is like a very common attention variant. I uh, used to have stuff like causal masking, uh, which is you know, just like every query token only wants to attend to tokens before it. And, and so you know, the way this looks like in flex attention is you just uh, check whether your Q index is greater than or equal to your KV index, like i.e. is your Q position uh, like ahead of your KV position. And if, if it is, you keep the value, otherwise you mask it out by returning like negative infinity. And so although this is a totally valid way of impl implementing a causal mask uh, with flex attention, there's actually a very spe uh, special thing about masking, which is that if you've masked out a value, then you completely don't need to compute it at all. Um, and so now, you know, we, uh, to do this, we kind of introduce this new concept of a mask mod. And to use a mask mod, you simply, uh, instead of just directly passing a score mod, you need to first create a block mask and pass your mask mod to the block mask, uh, and then you can pl pass a block mask into your flex attention uh, kernel. And in exchange for this like, little bit of extra indirection, uh, you can see that uh, our uh, performance with uh, implementing with a mask mod, like for a causal intention, gets more than 2x faster. And this is pretty natural, because with causal intention, you can kind of skip uh, you know, half of your computation and get about a 2x uh, performance gain. Um, here's like another you know, variant of attention that people want to implement is like sliding window, uh, where it's kind of like your uh, causal mask as well, but you also only want to attend to like, tokens that are uh, like relatively close to you. And so this kind of uh, avoids like the quadratic uh, complexity of attention. And so this, I think, was popularized in like a Mistral's uh, first model. And so you, you can see, once again, this is like super simple to implement with a flex attention. You just check whether like the Q index minus K index is less than your sliding window size. And then you combine the masks uh, together. Uh, another variant, again, that people want is uh, something called prefix LM, uh, where it's kind of like you want to like have a beginning part of your mask that's uh, bidirectional. And then the rest of it is like uh, the rest of it is like non uh, is like causal mask, and so this is caught popular like in originally I think in the T5 model, uh, but recently we've also seen this a lot for like multimodal models and things like that. Uh, and once again, you know, it's super I think straightforward to implement with a uh, flex attention. Uh, you just check whether your KV position is less than or equal to your prefix length. Uh, finally, this is a more involved uh, document mask, uh, like a more advanced uh, masking. Uh, which is like the situation here is that you have like multiple sequences with different lengths. And so now you want to do attention across all of your sequences, uh, even though they're like, you know, jagged and they're not all the same length. And so with uh, flex attention, this is actually super easy to implement. Uh, you just, you know, need to compute like which document each token belongs to. You flatten it to a single sequence. And then in your mask bond, you simply check whether you, the document ID of your query token is equal to the document ID of your KV token. And so the way this mask looks like is kind of like this block uh, diagonal uh, mask on the right. Uh, and uh, another kind of cool thing here is you can kind of combine two masks uh, together, uh, kind of just like you know leveraging you know all your regular Python composition of functions. And so here's like a prefix LM plus uh, document masking uh, if that's something that you know anybody has uh, needed to use. And so finally, I kind of did want to touch on performance, uh, which is that our performance is like I think overall quite good. Uh, you know, this is on running on H100s, and so typically we're like around 10 to 15 percent slower than Flash Extension 3 uh, on uh, Hopper uh, GPUs. Uh, and uh, you know, compared to Flash Extension 2, we're like way faster. We're like maybe 20, 30 percent faster than Flash Extension 2, and we're only like 10 to 15 percent slower than uh, Flash Extension 3. Uh, so this is kind of giving you most of the performance of like a really, the, you know, the state of the art uh, fused attention kernels, uh, but way more flexibility uh, than you know those APIs typically provide you. So to kind of you know kind of take this a uh, full circle, 
uh, prior to Flex Attention, kind of the state of the world is that you had to either choose between flexibility, like a PyTorch uh, native uh, attention kernel, versus a performant att attention kernel, which is like Flash Attention 3. Uh, but today, with a Flex Attention, you can hopefully get the best of both worlds. Uh, you both get flexibility and performance. And so hopefully, you'll never run into a situation where you, know, you have a cool new attention variant, uh, but Flash Attention 3 just doesn't support you know, the kernel, like doesn't, just doesn't support the attention thing uh, you want to do. And so hopefully, you guys uh, have fun with this API. Uh, thank you. Um, is there another talk after us? or? Uh, Yes? Or, or do like, I'm happy to answer questions if there's not another talk after us, but uh, I don't, I don't want to like, take somebody else's time. Uh, OK, sure. I'll answer uh, some questions then. OK. Uh, is there a performance benefit, if I understand correctly, comes mainly from the fusing of the ops? Or is there something more? Uh, is there some, what is the pathological case for this? What is the adversarial case where this would not give us uh, enough uh, performance benefit. Is it the same case that fusing does not give you enough? Uh, uh, it, it's, a, it's a bit different because like, this, this specific semantics of score mod uh, are that it takes scalar tensors. Right. And so pretty much any point wise function you do can be fused into the tension kernel. Okay. Uh, so it's actually like, quite hard to come up with pathological cases that, uh, like, it, like, it, uh, like, more specifically, if, if, if it succeeds in running, It'll be fused. Like, uh, there's no case where it'll succeed in running uh, and uh, not be fused. Uh, there are cases where you can make an error, uh, but it's like a very explicit API in, in that sense. Okay, and uh, because you lower it to Triton kernels, yeah, uh, by default, is there a, a case where this would actually be? Uh, maybe we can take it offline, but I want to see if there's like a way to fuse this with use this with FSDP and DDP for multiple attention heads, and how do we? Fuse those um, scores, score mods. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, we we talk about it offline. Sounds good. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I assume these performance re results are when you uh, use the Torch inductor Dynamo backend, right? Uh, yeah, this is with a Torch compile. And so, so how does it um, go with other backends which aren't Torch inductor? Uh, uh, th th this uh, this feature d does rely on Torch compile, uh, like a Torch inductor as a backend. Um, mm -hmm. And does yeah. it work for like w one of the custom uh, Dynamo backends that that's not Torch inductor? Or? Uh, no. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you. So so first off, uh, thanks for being kind to QDNN in your final slide. I appreciate <laughs> that. Um, but I just want to ask, are there plans? Because if it's only an inductor, are there plans to maybe have something like this in Eager, even if you need to pay a JIT cost for like the first time you run your... Uh, or I mean, like, like in some sense, like to be clear, you, you don't need to really use Torch Compile on your whole model in order to use this feature. Uh, a very common use case for this is you only apply Torch Compile only on the flex attention part, and then the rest of your model is still in, you know, some other, like it's still in Eager, you know, you, you don't need to compile the whole model. Okay. And, and so in that manner, it is, Basically eager, like I, I, I it's like uh, I, I don't think there's really any significant difference uh, between like an eager implementation versus what what we already support. Yeah, and and real quick, like, are you creating some kind of IR or DSL for the score mod function, or what does that kind of look like? Uh, I mean, it's so it's an FX graph, right? So it's like the same graph capture that Torch compile uses uh, generically. Okay, cool. Thanks. Um, yeah. Is there any block quantization effect for the mask size? Um, like, would you prefer the blo the mask to be blocked in, like, let's say, 128 by 128 blocks? Or? Yeah, yeah. So, so or, uh, in this case, like, uh, the the mask, like, is, the block mask is like a kind of a special object. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is like block sparsity uh, on, under the hood. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, yeah, like, uh, your uh, ideally your masking is like, uh, like, yeah, like if you if you don't have sparsity, where it's like it's a full block that's a masked out, we won't so, be able to take advantage of it. Yeah. So what? Uh, but we, so we don't require that your uh, mask is like fully blocked. So what the what the block size? Uh, 128 by 128 okay. by default, but uh, like it, it, it's a like we, we, we like you can change you can increase the block size if you want to like use less memory or, or something like that. Okay, sounds good. And how about FPA support in flex attention? Um, unfortunately, Driss isn't here, but uh, like he he's been uh, working on it and he's he's been thinking about it. Okay, yeah. thank you. Any timeline? Uh, probably <laughs> uh, on the spot here. Uh, I think probably in the next like uh, uh, by, probably by the end of the year we'll we'll probably have, okay. have something around FPA. Amazing, thank you. Okay. Right, and I guess one other thing about that is we're also like talking with a lot of other kind of attention 
like there's a lot of other attention kernels that kind of want to integrate as a backend into a flex attention. And so th that might also be another way that FPA gets supported. Uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, I can't quite tell from the slides. So you have like score mod and mask mod. Another kind of dimension of flexibility is in the physical layout, especially of the KV cache, whether it's paged or if you're doing a continuous batching setup, you might have a mixture of Q tokens, each of which are attending to a different subset of the KV cache. Yeah. Is that expressible with this? Is that yes. something you've looked at? Uh, I, I actually, uh, you, can, you can actually express uh, page attention uh, fully generically with a flex attention. Uh, like we, we don't need to actually do any special support on the flex attention side. Uh, you can actually implement uh, page attention fully uh, with uh, score mod and mask mod. Uh, th th this is not super obvious. <laughs> uh, and so we'll, we'll be publishing a follow-up blog post in sometime uh, about kind of like inference cases uh, and like uh, dealing with like page, implementing page attention and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, I, I think it's actually uh, pretty cool. Like it's uh, <laughs> like uh, we, we can kind of implement page attention generically for like an arbitrary uh, mask uh, that you have. Um, we, we don't need to add like special support for uh, paging. Uh, for, for inference. Awesome, thanks. Yeah. Uh, hi, I have a question about the block mask. How okay. flexible can it be? Because when we tried it, um, flex attention itself is really fast, but creating the dynamic block mask requires recompiling every time, and it takes a really long time for us. Uh, sorry, uh, what do you mean by recompiling every time? Like, like uh, um, when we passing the mask mod, it changes, like the input shape actually changes. Like, it's like the document ID example. Yeah. And um, what we observe is that it's recompiling. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, you don't need to compile the like block mask creation function. OK. Uh, yeah. I think there, there might have been some other stuff like a while ago that we might have fixed. Um. Um, but uh, yeah, like the, the, the creation of the block mask itself is fundamentally not doesn't need to be expensive. Like okay. it, in the limit, like the block mask itself is just like a very small a tensor, relatively speaking, uh, that you need to create. And, and so like the, the main thing we provide is like this create block mask utility, uh, which kind of does it in like a very stupid way, which is we compute the entire mask and, and then we like, you know, uh, sum it down to create the block mask. And this works fine for uh, many cases, but th there are certain cases where uh, um, like uh, you, you'll want to create like your own custom block mask creator. I see. Um, okay. Yeah, uh, I'll send. Yeah, we, we can talk offline. Yeah, okay. Sorry, are, are you next? Uh